Okay, so we should be recording for Panopto. So let's go ahead and start here. So do you find do you want to pass or play? Uh, pass. Uh, uh, play, play. Play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I jump. So I'm sorry. Say again. Lin oh, Lin Fan Jomo. Very good. That's exactly what it is. So, um, portions of it look like angiokeratoma, especially if you see this filled with blood. But the hint is that there are some of the vessels purely filled with lymph. Lymphangioma commonly has hemorrhage, but a hemangioma or angiokeratoma never has lymph. Right. So, um, if you see both, go with the lymph side of the two. Well done. Okay, Falian, what do you think? Uh, the odd portion resembles them. Yeah, so the upper portion resembles lymphangioma, very open spaces. How about the lower portion? The lower portion is basically very, very spot. You are correct. Capuchy sarcoma. So you have spindle cells with erythrocytes between the spindle cells, no apparent vascular spaces, typical for KS. This is a nice example because it shows you how angiomatous KS can look. There, during the height of the AIDS epidemic, these were a dime a dozen things that looked like IPEH, angioma that were that evolved as KS. So, um, be careful about angiomatous lesions of of KS. This one had both tumor and angiomatous phase KS visible as a clue to the diagnosis. Well done. So you got a lymph node, and then what is in the lymph node? Spindle and epithelial cells, and between them, lots of little red things. So lots of erythrocytes. Like single file. Yeah. Say that um, well, not necessarily, because you ha you see some little vascular spaces in here, right? Yeah. Okay. How about the nuclei? Do they look good or bad? Not good. Not good, right? Lots of mitoses. Um, there are mites, there are um, peppered moth type of chromatin pattern, lots of stringy chromatin, lots of nucleoli, irregular nucleoli, nucleoli with stems. Um, so thoughts? Something bad vascular <coughs> in a lymph node. I mean angiosarcoma. Yeah, it's exactly what it is, is metastatic angiosarcoma. Yeah. Stain that anyway, or just like oh, I would absolutely stain that, yeah. Um, and look for history to see if there is um, history of KS, HIV. Um, but that was a conventional angiosarcoma. So something big or something small? Something big. Looks big. Um, <coughs> and then characterized by what are all of these tiny little round things? Um, or what if they well, are I guess lumen? They just be little vessels, yeah. Yeah, so what kind of tumor is sheet like and has tiny little holes all through it, which are lumen formation? Yes. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, anyone want to jump in with which one does that? With the epithelioid. Yep. Hemangium. You are absolutely correct. Epithelioid hemangia endothelioma. And is that more like benign or more like cancer? Yep, it's cancer. So epithelioid and retiform hemangia endothelioma are cancer. Spindle cell hemangia endothelioma is the one that Sharon Weiss wants to call spindle cell hemangioma to emphasize that that one's not cancer. So spindle cell hemangia endothelioma, not cancer. Epithelioid and retiform are cancer. Um, the key is they stain as endothelial cells. You have a you typically a sheet-like growth pattern, and then it is all full of tiny little vascular lumen that are intracytoplasmic. So sheets of endothelial cells, intracytoplasmic lumen creating an appearance of lots of little round white circles, right? There's definitely some granular lymph inside, so lymphangioma. lymphangioma. You are correct. So <coughs> it's like we're on a head or neck. Uh, what do you say, head or neck? It's a good so lots of. I agree, fair number of hair follicles. They're small, but what if they're small because the person is small? What do you think about the collagen? Like a baby head and neck. Yeah, <laughs> so small, um, very dark red collagen bundles, lots of fibroblasts still present, so kid skin. So in this baby head and neck, kid skin, you've got a deep, deep to the sub-Q. You have this tumor that's kind of mangioma or solid with slit-like spaces. So are those slit-like spaces usually a characteristic of a hemangioma? Uh, no. Hemangiomas usually have round spaces. What would a kid get that has slit-like spaces in a vascular tumor? Um, so I'm hearing whispers saying that. Perisytoma. Um, eh, that's usually not split. That's usually more rosettes. Okay. Yeah, Kaposiform oh, okay. hemangiendothelioma. So Sorry. these are the Sorry. most common cause for Kassebach Merritt. Mm -hmm. So it's kid skin. It's a deep tumor, slit-like spaces. Those are kind of the keys. So kid skin, deep tumor, slit-like spaces. Consumption coagulopathy. Sometimes you'll find evidence of thrombosis within the neoplasm, but not always. So that's Kaposiform hemangioma endothelioma. Um, if you're working off an old copy of the book you, online, all of these are in a soft tissue atlas, and uh, most of them in the online lectures. Um, in the new version of the book, they're all in the book. You know, we were we got extra pages, so we were able to migrate all of that stuff into into the text. So there's superficial vessels kind of up in the papillary dermis. Looks like what? Maybe angiokeratoma. Looks like angiokeratoma, but you commented that there's something going on deeper, and in fact, there's hemocytorin down here. Is it a 
THH. It is a THH. Who's the one that? Near miss, but you're you're still with us. So um, that is absolutely a targeted hemosiderata comangioma. So the key is that uh, the superficial portion looks kind of like angiokeratoma or lymphangioma, but there's a deeper portion that is kaposiform, wrapped around vessels and with uh, typically with hemosiderin deposition. So superficial portion that resembles a, um, an angiokeratoma or lymphangioma, deeper portion that is kaposiform with hemosiderin. Okay. So you got kind of a thick feeder vessel. And then you have these widely dilated spaces, and then lots of spindle cell. Mm, so um, so capsies absolutely would be a reasonable thought for this, especially because you have spindle cells with some erythrocytes lining up. You do HHV8 on this and it's negative. And the large feeder vessel is not typical for KS, okay. right? This is something that proliferates because of trauma to a large feeder vessel. So AVM. So related to AVM. So the things related to AVMs, um, angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia has a big feeder vessel. Pyogenic granuloma has a big feeder vessel. Spindle cell hemangioma has or spindle cell hemangioendothelioma, depending which name you like, has a feeder vessel. All of them are f essentially fancy versions of an ABM, some prior trauma to a vessel. So you go down your list. It could be a simple AVM. Does that usually give you spindled cells? Mm -hmm. Not so much, right? Mm -hmm. um, which one has areas that have been thought to resemble hemorrhagic lung, alveolar spaces the with blood, cell. and then spindle cells is the spindle cell hemangioma or spindle cell hemangioendothelioma. Now this one's a little bit of a ringer because it has some um, tiny little white circles similar to an epithelioid hemangioma. If it's a hybrid hemangioendothelioma, then um, those are suspect and sometimes behave like low-grade malignancy. So the hemorrhagic lung appearance, alveolar spaces filled with blood, spindle cells, often phleboliths present. This example didn't have phleboliths. Often a traumatized feeder vessel <coughs> go with spindle cell hemangioendothelioma, also called spindle cell hemangioma to emphasize that it's benign. And then if you see overlap features with epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, which would be sheet-like growth pattern, intracytoplasmic little round white lumen formation, then that one needs a little more careful follow-up because behavior is more suspect. Dr. Elson, Jared Gardner calls those little holes mini fat cells. Mini he fat said cells. That's a clue. Well, and like, so that's wasn't a clue. that your description, as you yeah. said, looks kind of like fat? <laughs> so I kind of like that. Mini <laughs> fat cells in a solid tumor, um, emphasizing the little white holes, right? Little white round things. I myself prefer a little white round thing. <laughs> <laughs> but Jared's a smart guy and funny. Okay, and this is in the wrong box. So let me walk you through it. So I see leukocytoclastic vasculitis with fibrin, and I see lots of pus, and so it is pyoderma gangrenosum, but someone saw PG and threw it into the vascular box. It's not that PG, it is the other PG. <coughs> so if you could put that in the vasculitis box, please. <coughs> okay. How about this thing? So some big dilated vessels. Big dilated yes. vessels. What are these 
Organizing thrombi. Organizing thrombus. Um, so pH. Okay. So oh, intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia does that, but I don't really see anything mm. papillary. There are big open vascular spaces. You're just starting to get spindle cells. This is the early stage of spindle cell hemangioma as it forms around a traumatized vessel. And then these thrombi are going to become the phleboliths. So what is that? It's like a pilar cyst. Like a pilar cyst, and then the pilar cyst mm -hmm. ruptured, and then after the rupture, what grew in the pilar cyst? Endothelium. So you have endothelium, but it's distinctly lobulated with fibrous septi in between. PT? Yeah, so it's a little pyogenic granuloma growing into a ruptured cyst, <coughs> kind of a twofer. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a superficial papule here. Um, it's a superficial papule. So nothing to worry about. Yeah, mm -hmm. you wouldn't say that. It um, kind of looks like chaos. Mm -hmm. kind of looks like chaos in that you have some areas that look more angiomatous, other areas where there's spindle cells and the erythrocytes are between the spindle cells. So the first thing you do is reach for an HHV8 stain, and this one was positive. And KS will often cross over with characteristics of many different tumors. So you have vascular-like spaces, and then around the vascular-like space you have proliferation of all of these cells. So the endothelium is squashed, it seems to be a proliferation of what's around your endothelium. And they're kind of cut longitudinally. We're not seeing good rosettes in this example because they're all cut longitudinally, but in cross-section some of these would form rosettes around the space. So, yeah, or my myoparasitoma. So it's the um, it's the <coughs> myoid layer surrounding the vessel that's proliferating and growing the tumor. No unilaxed. I'm sorry? No unilaxed. No. The no onion skinning and no um, and in that particular example, um, no good rosetting. Myoparasitomas often have nice rosettes. So you have hyperchromatic nuclei forming crack-like spaces between the collagen, and you are absolutely correct, Falyang, that that is angiosarcoma. Well done. So you have wrapping around the vessels. You have a pre-existing vessel. And then you have a wrap of vascular space or multiple wraps of vascular space around it. So it juts into that space, similar to the way a little jetty of land would jut into the ocean. What do you call that? Uh, yeah, promontory. A promontory, right? So you got promontory sign there. And you have areas that look kind of angiosarc like between the collagen, but this is a special type of angiosarc that tends to wrap around and around pre-existing structures, and that is what? Okay. Capuchy sarcoma. 
Although the guy's name was Kopshi, apparently. Actually, his name was Cohn. But the river. he came from the town of Kopshi with the Kopshi River. So Apparently, just like people would say, hey, Toledo, how you doing? It was, hey, Kopshi, how you doing? Right. Um, so it looks like we have some dilated superficial vessels. So dilated vessels. Do they look normal? <coughs> no. So mm -hmm. vessels are usually what shape? Round. And are these round? Mm -hmm. And they form, they dissect between the collagen with those mm -hmm. hyperchromatic endothelial cells. Yeah, so I guess I'd think about angiosarcoma. That's exactly what it is, is angiosarcoma. <coughs> <coughs> Little papule, very crusted. Mm -hmm. it's probably more, um, Not seeing great septation, but there's kind of a divide in the middle suggesting there may have been septation there. So probably pyogenic. Probably pyogenic granuloma. Either that or a hemangioma that's had a very bad week. That's wrong box. A little bit of skin here. Some kind of very <coughs> busy dermis. Lots of hyperchromatic nuclei. Maybe a little, little white circles. Um, kind of oriented fascicles. Now, in a with the little white circles. Do you tend to have blood <coughs> in an epithelial hemangioendothelioma, or does it more resemble fat because they're little white round things? Like fat. Yeah, so it's sheets of epithelioid cells with little white round spaces. Whereas this, I see spindle cells and I see lots of erythrocytes. So it's spindle cell hemangio. <coughs> So spindle cell hemangioendothelioma can do that. Do you see oh, any hemorrhagic lung type alveolar spaces? So what else is spindle cell lacks the alveolar hemorrhagic spaces and has erythrocytes between the spindle cells? KS. Yep. HHV8 positive. So tumor <coughs> phase KS. Obviously proliferation of vessels. I'm trying to see if they have kind of septae. So the top is eroded. There's yeah. definitely a cholerate. Yeah. A little suggestion of yeah. septation. So probably another pyogenic granuloma, distinctly lobular with septation. <coughs> um, so ropey collagen would typically be in the septi. And you definitely have some ropey collagen here in between suggesting septation and, lo and lobulation, which, is, um, which are very helpful. You have some dilated spaces. So, is your dermis normal or is it busy, busy? I don't know if it's really busy or not. And is it diffusely busy or is it busy yeah. around pre existing structures? Yeah, it's around pre existing structures. And in fact, here where your post capillary venule is, see how busy it is around mm -hmm. the post capillary venule? Busy around the post capillary venule, busy around the eccrine. <laughs> busy around the erector pili, busy around everything that was already there in the skin. So what produces busy, busy around all the pre-existing structures? Um, 
chaos can do yeah, that. Yeah, that's early chaos, right? So K we've seen lots of examples of tumor KS, which is spindle cells with erythrocytes. Early KS is busy, busy around all the pre-existing structures in the dermis. Just busy, busy, and when you stain that busy, busy, it's all endothelial. Okay, so endothelial busy, busy around all the pre-existing structures in the dermis is capsies. And THH does that in the deeper component but has the dilated angiokeratoma-like spaces above, with, which this does not have. That's absolutely correct. I got the hyalinized vessels. So big hyalinized vessels and then little vessels, so thick and thin vessels. AVM. Yep. AVM. Some people like to call them AV hemangioma. Either way is fine. AV malformation, AV hemangioma. PD event. Yep, so cholerate, eruptive, lobular, septi, often a feeder, little <coughs> arterial vessel. When you treat PGs and take them off, you often have that tiny little pumping vessel that goes into them. Great big flebolith, hemorrhagic lung type space, little bits of spindle cells. So spindle cell hemangioendothelioma, <laughs> same thing as spindle cell hemangioma, so that's all that's all good. Okay, next one. You have vascular space in the middle, but around and around and around it, these muscle-like things. A myoparasitoma. It's very good. And that one looks almost like an angiolyomyoma, the way it forms a little <coughs> bee in the skin. Okay, we're somewhere on acral skin. Then you got this tumor on acral skin. Okay, the feet. sarcoma again. You have spindle like spindle cells, erythrocytes between the spindle cells. That's what tumor KS looks like. Early <laughs> KS <coughs> looks different with busy, busy dermis. So not great septi, right? I mean, suggestion focally. So you would have said what? PG. But what kind of PG thing has neutrophils not on the surface, but clusters of neutrophils deep in it? Vascular angiomatosis. And this is someone from the mountains of Peru covered with crusty lesions that look like vascular angiomatosis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Veruga peruana. Yeah. So Veruga peruana <laughs> is the chronic stage of Arroyo fever, Bartonellosis. So it's closely related to the organisms that cause um, bacillary angiomatosis with HIV. So um, bacillary angiomatosis with HIV, cat exposure, fleas on the cat, you get bitten, you get the Bartonella type organism, and the, it causes bacillary angiomatosis. Looks kind of like a PG, but less tendency for septation. Deep clusters of neutrophils, not crusted on the surface like when a PG erodes, but deep clusters of neutrophils within it. That's bacillary angiomatosis, most commonly HIV associated, but there's an endemic form in South America called Peruvian warts or Veruga peruana. And um, Veruga peruana is, you're covered with these PG-like things, 
which is bacillary angiomatosis, um, carried by the Bartonella bacilliformis, carried by a fly that bites you. And then a young physician named Carrion, he was actually a medical mm -hmm. student, and he inoculated himself with a Peruvian wart and died of acute arroyo fever, becoming a Peruvian national hero, proving that it was the same organism. So sometimes called Carrion's disease. This one. And then what are these things? Those look like strings of black pearls. So if it's a tumor of glomus cells, you call it a glomus tumor. And what if it's an angioma with gloma cells? And which one is painful? I think the glomus tumor. And which one is multiple and inherited? Glomangioma. So glomangiomas are multiple, inherited, look like a mangioma with rows of gloma cells surrounding the ange, right? And um, glomus tumor is sporadic, solitary, painful and sheets of gloma cells. This is a glomangioma, so this is the type that would be inherited. You have the, the dilated vessel and just a row or two of gloma cells around it. So like maybe a promontory sign, which would make you think KS, KS but it's HHV8 negative. Okay. Kind of like slit like structures. Kind of like, but they're larger, mm -hmm. right? They're a little bigger than the crack-like things you get in a regular angiosarcoma. Um, and if you had enough of these back to back, it would look kind of like reedy testis. So that's retiform hemangiendothelioma, which is a type of angiosarcoma. <coughs> so remember, epithelioid and retiform are cancer, and spindle cell is not among your so-called hemangiendotheliomas. Yeah, the, the, it's a retiform tumor, they often merge in a, in a net-like rotiform pattern, like Reedy testis. Um, that one, you know, if you had called it an angiosarcoma, calling them crack-like, that's right too, because rotiform from angiendothelioma is a subtype of angiosarcoma. So proliferation of kind of grayish cells and they're diffuse top to bottom, side to side, right? No. What what are they then? Kind of not like and what are they around? Uh, <coughs> pre existing vessel. Around every pre existing vessel, hair follicle, every pre existing structure in the dermis. What are we looking at? early capuchies, right? So early capuchies busy, busy around every pre-existing structure in the dermis. Later tumor KS, nodular spindle cells with erythrocytes in between. Very early KS, looks almost like lymphangioma, but has plasma cells as a clue. Okay. Collagen's pretty red there. Um, 
just give a bundle of thick walled vessels. Thick walled vessels, some thin walled vessels around them. AVM. Yeah. AVM. Most common place for AVM. Lip. Trauma. Yeah, because you bite your lip. Second <laughs> most common fingers, because you jab your fingers. Yeah, be kind of flattened, just one layer of thick endothelium. Common on the ears on some damaged skin. Venus Lake. Just lots and lots of tiny little round vessels. I've seen the epidermis, I think. A deeper. Uh, there's okay. epidermis there. It's kind of diffused through the dermis. There are a few larger vessels, but lots of proliferation of just little, little round vessels. PG? There's no septations. No septation, and it's growing around, I mean, it's growing around all your eccrine glands, just everywhere in the dermis. So, and the question was whether it was GLUT1 positive, and the answer is yes. So it's, you know, just hemangioma of infancy. So rich and niche tend to be GLUT negative. Your regular old hemangioma is just a huge proliferation of little round, they look benign, right, little round vessels all through the dermis, and they tend to be <coughs> GLUT1 positive, just like placenta. And there's some evidence, at least some of them, may actually represent um, um, essentially metastatic placenta in, in skin or closely related tissue to placenta. Okay, how about this? Mm -hmm. Angiokeratoma. Angiokeratoma. Good. Okay, I think we've covered most of them at least once. We got about 15 minutes left. You want to do 15 minutes of potpourri <coughs> or run through some more vascular tumors? I hear request for more vascular tumors. Um, for the soft tissue things, that's okay to yeah, spend. Um, so, the glomeruloid hemangioma, let's see what we can do here. <coughs> Um, so we do have pecomas. Most of them are in the fellow boxes, though. Oh, okay. so come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there are actually some vasculitis <laughs> things in here that belong in different boxes. <laughs> As people are studying, they're putting them in the wrong box. Okay, those both go in vasculitis box. a Churg Strauss and a PAN in there. Okay, so let's run through. So pecomas tend to be perivascular or nest-like clear cells often, and they stain both for melanocytic and smooth muscle markers. That's kind of what defines the pecomas. Um, Glomeruloid hemangioma resembles a glomerulus, has degenerating erythrocytes in it. I think we have some nice pictures in the book, and there was one in your unknowns for the week. Okay. How about this? So first off, judging by the small muscle, the small, red, very deeply red staining collagen, is this one of the senior set or one of the junior set? A young person, junior set. And then, the, and it's kind of a tufted proliferation, and tufted angioma tends to be on the shoulder, upper back, upper chest, slowly expanding plaque on a, one of the junior set, <coughs> and it's um, negative for HHV8, and only rarely associated with Casabach merit, 
um, but it is a slowly progressive plaque. And the other name for it? Angioblastoma of Nakagawa. If you want the simpler name. Okay, next one. Lots and lots and lots of little round circles. Look almost like fat. And then epithelioid cells in between. Yep, correct. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. So epithelioid hemangioma, or I'm sorry, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, which is a low grade angiosarcoma. <coughs> Um, sheets of epithelial cells, little round, resembling fat, white circles. Glomus tumor. So at the periphery, you see strings of black pearls. Yes. But this one, rather than being an ange with just a layer or two of glomus cells, this is a tumor of gloma cells, so what would one call that? A glomus tumor, as opposed to a glomangioma. Okay, how about that? Angiokeratoma, very good. Now I've got them on my fingers, what do you call those? And I lied, I actually have them on, um, in one little circumscribed area. And your keratoma circumscriptum. Mm -hmm. But I lied, they're actually mm -hmm. on my scrotum and under my tongue as caviar spots. Four dice, Four dice. benign. Four. Um, but I lied again, and they're actually all over my suprapubic area and sacral area, and they're almost like little brownish um, petechiae. Angiokeratoma corpus diffusum associated with Fabry's disease. Um, but I lied, I'm actually a baby with failure to thrive and those lesions all over. Fucosidosis. So fucosidosis is neonate. <coughs> Fabry's is young man with lancinating pains in the limbs and sometimes going on to kidney failure and um, circumscriptum's benign, all the other types are benign. Mabelli on the fingers is associated with ch prior chilblains. Okay. okay, how about this? Um, yeah, glomangioma. You have just a row or two of gloma cells around an ange, right? So that's a glomangioma as opposed to the glomus tumor. Um, just this is not for anyone to do, just to show you that's what HHV8 stains like, right? It's a nuclear stain and it can be a red or brown chromogen that you're using. In this case it's diaminobenzidine, so it's brown. So easy to do in the lab these days. Okay, how about this? You got some large vessels, and then you have lots and lots and lots of little round vessels. Oh, yeah, so AVM or juvenile hemangioma. The problem is all the juvenile hemangiomas have some of these large vessels in them. So histologically, classifying vascular malformation versus vascular proliferative is, act, is better done clinically than histologically. Histologically, most of them look like AVMs. Drives the pediatric germs crazy <laughs> because they're asking you which one is it and they tend to look the same histologically. So, um, so flow studies, things like that can be more helpful. Top center is missing, right? 
There's some hemosiderin down there. There is some hemosiderin around there. So give me two things this could be. Uh, targetoid. So it could be THH or it could be um, just a little bit of ar around eccrine units, around the follicles. KS. So KS. And this is what we always say the dermal part of THH looks similar to Kaposi's sarcoma. So you'd want to put an HHVA stain on this. Especially because you don't have the nice superficial antikeratoma like areas. There's a dermal nodule in there. Dermal nodule, probably vascular. Right. Do you see nice septation? Nice. Not nice. No. And then what are these? Are those newts? Those are clusters of newts. So probably basilary angiomatosis. Basilary angiomatosis, you are correct. And if you are from the Peruvian Andes? Arroyo <coughs> fever. Arroyo fever, chronic phase, virga peruana, Carrion's disease. So there's maybe a little lymph in there. Yeah, so possibility of, of a lymphatic or anti-lymphatic malformation. This area though kind of sits in a crescent-like space. There's some degenerated erythrocytes in there. Like glomeruloid. So you may want to look for evidence of Poem syndrome especially M protein in that patient. So first off you have a big high endothelial feeder vessel in there, right? So you can see it kind of down here. And then it looks like gloma cells around it. So glomangioma. So busy, busy dermis. This is microvenial. Well done. Someone needs to pass that easy button over. Thank you. That was easy. So. Um, one of the things that can mimic Kaposi's, but microvenular hemangioma, first off, it has no tendency to cluster around pre-existing structures, unlike KS. It's HHV8 negative, which helps if there's ever a question. And they're just little round and slightly flattened vessels, very small throughout the dermis. So microvenular hemangioma, very good. Kind of crack like spaces with hyperchromatic high endothelial cells. Angiosarcoma. And then we'll end. One other here, you have these vessels, and then within the vessel, you have a proliferation of what look like endothelial cells. So you see the proliferation of endothelial cells within the vascular space with thrombosis. So angioendotheliomatosis comes in two forms. There's reactive, which is usually associated with severe infection, and there's the type that's really lymphoma, and those aren't endothelial cells at all, so there's angiotropic lymphoma. So this is a true reactive angioendotheliomatosis, proliferation of endothelium within the vessel resulting in vascular occlusion. The other type is angiotropic lymphoma that does the same thing, and they can mimic endothelial cells. Both are commonly fatal, usually from cerebral infarction. 
Um, the lymphoma ones um, we had, first patient I saw was when I was a derm resident and he was a 50 year old guy, showed up on biopsy, vessels occluded by lo looked like endothelial cells. Later we had markers and it was lymphoma. But a week later, he was found wandering on the, roof, on the roof of their house by his wife, confused, and then had um, multi-infarct dementia over the next few a couple of weeks and then died of just um, intractable um, CVAs and cerebral infarction. Infarctive skin lesions, infarctive lesions else everywhere just because of the occluded vessel. So the reactive ones tend to be um, sometimes endocarditis, viral, other severe infections, and the, um, but you always stain to see are they really endothelial cells, which is reactive, or are they lymphoma cells, which can respond, especially if B um, can respond now that we have antibodies to CD20. And with that, we're done, and we did 75. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.